Hello everyone! For today's video I made one of my favorite ways to cook and eat cod, although not a very traditional one. Baked cod with maize brow crust. Since the cod pieces will be baked and served whole for this dish, I prefer to use thicker ones from what would be the loin part of the fish. As in the previous video, these have already been soaked in cold water for 72 hours, changing the water every 24 hours. The first step is to wrap these in paper towels. The goal here is to get the outer surface of the fish dry enough for my crust to stick. For my side dish, I made roasted sweet potato sticks. My wife and son really liked them this way, and we had a lot in our vegetable basket this week. I just cut the potato in half so the sticks fit in my pot, then cut in half again, but lengthwise. After this, it's easy to just lay them on the board and cut the sticks. I prefer to cut them in rather thick sticks. Requires less work and they tend to hold together better. The next step is to boil the sweet potatoes until they get soft. Oh no you won't. Never forget to add salt to your liking. While the potatoes boil, there's enough time to prepare the crust. And for that, I use this. In Portuguese, we call it broa de milho. It can translate into maize broa. It's a type of dense bread made with flour from cereals low on gluten mixed with wheat flour. Maize in this case, but you can also easily find rye broa. The word itself is thought to derive from the Gothic and Swabian word brauth, which just means bread. Just cut a quarter of a broa into thin slices, then cut those slices into smaller pieces. They need to fit into a food processor, and the smaller they are, the easier it will be to get smaller crumbs for the crust. After cutting the broa, place it inside the food processor and let it turn everything to crumbs. This process is easier the staler the broa is. I thought I had a stale enough broa, but I was wrong. It contained too much moisture to crumble easily, and the crumbs tended to stick to one another. Rye broa is naturally drier than maize, but for making crusts I prefer the sweeter taste of maize. To correct this, I placed the broa, plus the other quarter sliced, in my oven at 100 degrees Celsius with convection, in an attempt to dry it. In the meantime, the sweet potatoes have been boiling for about 20 minutes and should be ready for the next step. Just pierce them with a fork, if there is little to no resistance they are ready. Any more and you'll end up with mashed sweet potatoes. Drain the pot and add a generous amount of extra virgin olive oil. It should be enough to completely coat the potato sticks and leave a shallow puddle in the bottom. Shake and toss the pot a little to help coat, but try not to mash everything. Now get a wide oven tray and transfer the potato sticks onto it. I've been having very good results with this non-stick tray, but if you coated your potato sticks with enough oil, any baking tray should be fine. Spread your sticks across the tray, make sure they are not on top of each other, and that contact is minimal. Treat it like a pandemic. By now, the bro in the oven should have dried considerably. I took it out and ramped the oven up to 180 degrees Celsius and put the potatoes in. And I'll go ahead and throw the broa back into the food processor. It should crumb easier. I bought this broa on the day before making the dish. For better results, just buy the broa a week in advance. Even if it's pretty stale, it's difficult to get a fine crumb on broa due to the thick outer crust. So don't get discouraged if you think the crumbs are larger than you are used to. It might also be the case that my food processor just isn't powerful enough. With the crumb ready, it's just a matter of getting the crust on the fish. One beaten egg should be enough for this amount. I first coat the fish meat in plain wheat flour to help the egg stick. Then soak it in the egg. After, try to get a thick crust of crumbs on the meat side of the fish opposite to the skin. Everyone who coats food with this method has at some stage said, keep one hand wet and the other dry. It makes the process easier and a lot less messier. You might have to press the crumb crust a bit to make sure it sticks well to the fish meat. Some assembly might also be required. When ready, place them on an oven tray. I usually don't feel the need to oil my trays when baking salted cod. 
just place its skin down and it tends to stay loose. Add the remaining crumbs to the tray. No point in having food waste and you will get additional crunchy bits. I did not add seasonings to my crust at this stage, but if you want, I would suggest some dried herbs, like thyme or sage. Now get a large frying pan and place it on the stove on low heat. The yucky greenish muck you are seeing is just refrigerated olive oil. I keep some with caramelized onion and garlic in the refrigerator. It's a good thing to have on hand for a weekday meal. You can get all the flavor from slowly cooked onion and garlic in an instant. And without having to peel and cut the roots after spending hours at work. It's also very satisfying to watch it melt. Once the olive oil starts bubbling, place the fish pieces with the crust facing down on the frying pan. This will add to the flavor of the crust and give a crispy result. Take care while placing the cod in the frying pan. If the crumbs are too large, the crust may fall apart. I find it easier to do this with my hands. One and a half minutes should be enough to get the crust nice and brown. Any more and you might start getting burnt garlic flavor. Remove the fish from the frying pan and place it back on the tray skin down. I use a spatula to pick the fish and a wooden spoon to help me flip it gently. Might as well pour the hot olive oil on the tray. It gains some cod flavor so I cannot use it for other purposes. Check your potatoes before placing the cod in the oven. After 20 minutes they should be browning nicely and if you shake the tray they should release easily. I'm adding another level to the oven, above the potatoes, to place the cod tray. I let them finish while the cod bakes. 15 to 20 minutes should be enough to get the cod cooked through, without it being overcooked and dry. When it comes out of the oven, it should look like this. And next come the sweet potatoes. This turned out great, with a crispy outside and an almost jammy inside. The first plate is not the usual dinosaur plate. I need to debone one of these pieces for my son before serving it. But of course he will be getting the first serving of potatoes. I want to try this recipe with orange and purple sweet potatoes, but they are hard to come by. Leave a comment if you'd like to see a video with a comparison of these. Remember to add to the plate some of the olive oil from the bottom of the tray, together with some of the leftover crumbs. The brewer crust adds a nice crunch that contrasts well with the softness of the fish. You could probably replicate the texture with a seed based crunch, like sesame or pumpkin seeds, maybe shea. But those would not add the sweetness that is present in maize brewer, which for me is a key part in this recipe. Everything is served, I'll just top the plates with some spring onion before I call my family for dinner. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video and that you can take some ideas from here to apply to your own cooking. Until next time.